Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherp, and I really want to paint with you today. I want to show you how to make this really funny, crazy rainbow fish. Isn't he super duper cute? He's a really easy project that anyone can do. Let me show you the easy materials for him. Okay, I've got some Crayola brushes, some Crayola watercolors, just a number two pencil, a Sharpie, a straw, and a cup of water. I have watercolor paper here, but you can use regular paper if you tape it down. Just remember, it's going to wrinkle on you a little bit. So if it's possible to get watercolor paper, definitely do that. That's all going to be in the description below, all that material information for your mom or whoever's in charge. And remember, it's good if mom gets to paint along too, so everybody can do this project. Get your brushes, get your paints, get your stuff, and come back and meet me at Diesel right now. Come on, it'll be fun. It's time to make a fishy face. Are you ready to get creative? All right, so you got to remember the rules, which is that there are no rules. You're an artist. Be creative. Your artwork is not supposed to look like my artwork. I didn't paint like me until I painted a really, really, really long time. I'm just trying to show you some cool stuff that you can do at home with regular art materials that you can totally be proud of, okay? So I want you to be very relaxed about every part of this take deep breaths when you need them make sure your supervising adult is calm too because sometimes when grown-ups paint they get very tense right and just make sure that everybody remembers this is just art it doesn't have to be perfect yours is not supposed to look like mine so i can't wait to see how yours looks and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw this fishy and are you ready to draw it in all right let me show you what we're going to use now you are going to use a regular number two pencil and make a very, very, very light line. That means that you're going to barely, barely, barely touch the paper just enough so your little eyes can see it, okay? But I'm going to use a Sharpie because the camera doesn't see as good as you do and I want you to be able to see how to draw this fish in. Now the basic shape of the fish is almost a wobbly teardrop shape. Can you see that, how I'm drawing that around? When I get up to the tail, I'm gonna fan it out like a fan. That's gonna be where his blow tail is, okay? And then he's gonna have a crazy fin and a crazy fin. But I also want him to have a big eye this time. Think about how size tells a story. If eyes are really tiny, they look one way, and if they're really big, look another way. But the other thing about your eye you might not think about is the direction. What direction is he looking? If he's looking forward, it tells one kind of funny story, but if he's looking back, it makes it seem like something could be following him, and that's even more interesting. And I've decided, so that we aren't too worried about him, we're going to sit there and give him a little bit of a smile, okay? So that's all you've got to do to draw him in. But remember, I did in Sharpie, you do it in pencil. And the next part we've got to do is get painting. Now a painting is any kind of watercolor paint that you have. And here's something I want to say, especially to the adults that are supervising. And also you can remind your adults of this. Regular printer paper or inexpensive lightweight paper is perfectly fine to paint on, but it does this weird thing. It wrinkles. And sometimes it tears very easily. So the one place it would be great, if it's possible, and only if it's in your budget to upgrade, is to watercolor paper, paper that actually says for watercolor, or to multimedia paper. And a lot of times you can find those on really good sales at the craft store, so watch coupons. That's a great place to upgrade art materials for kids to help them get a really good, satisfying re result. But don't worry about the Crayola watercolors because I think they're a really, really great product. I think a lot of those watercolors are good. Let's open them up and get started. All right, so I'm going to open this up. And I have this nice set of really fun watercolors. And I've gone through and I put a little water, this is called priming, in all of my little pots, right? And I'm gonna pick out a brush. And I really, really, really like this just regular brush. I got these brushes from Crayola and I think they're really good and they work really well. And I have to decide what color Oh my goodness, what color do I want my fish to be? Because he lives under the ocean and he's any kind of fish I want and I think I'm deciding to do a rainbow fish. Rainbows are like my favorite. Like purple is my favorite color. What's your favorite color? Purple's my favorite color, 
But after purple, I like rainbow. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Purple, rainbow, purple, rainbow. It's hard. Do you, do you ever get like that? I really like color. So I'm going to do a rainbow. That way I have all the colors. And rainbows always start with red. But I've got this really cool kind of burgundy red that I can start with. And I'm going to do that right here at the edge, right? So rainbow, can anyone remember how rainbow goes? Rainbow goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. That is pretty fun to know. And that's always going to be a rainbow. And so you can always be painting a rainbow if you can just remember that color order. Now, I'm letting this paint be a little bit wet, and I'm going to paint around the eye. I'm going to get this bright, bright red right here. Actually, it's this one right here. And I'm going to paint this into the burgundy red I have and kind of around the eye. See how I'm doing that? And I'm letting the two paints blend together right here. I don't, like, just brush blend them like this where I brush and brush over it. I let the water blend them. And that's something you can do with watercolor is you can let the water blend it. So I'm letting the water blend it. See how it's blending in there? And it does that cool effect. I love doing that. Now the next color I'm gonna get, right, is my orange. Cause that's what comes next in the rainbow. That's what comes next. Orange is the next color. Just some orange right here. It's kind of fun. What comes after orange in a rainbow? Can you guys remember? It's yellow. Yellow comes next. Yellow is a very happy color. It's also, when artists talk about yellow and orange and red, they also like to say they're warm colors because they feel like the sun or a sunny day or warm temperatures. Right, but then as we paint on in our rainbow, our next color is green, and green is a slightly cooler color than yellow. And I'm using this bright green right here, it's kind of fun. But I think I'm gonna get the darker green because I want it to be like green, green, especially for the part where I might be blowing a fin. I'm gonna go green, I'm letting them blend. The water's blending them. I'm not brush blending them, I'm letting the water blend them. And then I'm gonna get this blue and I'm letting the water blend the two of them. And that's kind of fun. Isn't he a fun rainbow fish? I think he's a super fun rainbow fish. And then I'm gonna get the, the violet. All right, these two purples down here. And that's the end of my rainbow. Now what I can do on the tail, which is kind of crazy, and you guys are gonna be like, no, you can't do that, but I think I can do it, and I think that you can do it, is I can tell the rainbow story again a little bit in the tail. So I'm going to take the purple out like this a little bit with my brush. And then I'm gonna go back and sort of reverse the story a little bit. I'm gonna come back and get some blue so that when I blow on the tail, it's a little bit rainbow too. Can you guys see what my plan is here? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's gonna be, notice how I'm rinsing out my brush between colors so they don't get dirty. So I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna get my yellow now. Right, and then I'm gonna get my orange. It's gonna be crazy when I go to blow the tail. And then I'm gonna get my red. And it's like I told the story in reverse, isn't it? So he's rainbow here, and then he's got another rainbow here. Now the next part I've gotta do is I've gotta blow the paint. And since this is the furthest part away from me, that's the part I'm gonna try and blow first. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some watercolor with a lot of water, right, in the order that I put it out on. So I'll go purple, blue, 
Let me get some green, green, some yellow. I'm really rinsing out so I don't mix up and that's kind of hard and that's the big part you've got to do. That's your job. Try not to mix up the colors. Don't panic if you do. It's just art. All right, and I'm going to get my straw and I'm going to see if I can't do that really cool where I blow the air through the straw really close to the paper and make it crazy. Look at that crazy fin. Look at that crazy fin. Is that not really cool? Wow. No one's going to know how you did that. We'll just keep it our secret. And you can see why having a heavier paper on such a wet project is really, really helpful. If it's possible. If not, just tape your paper down with tape to prevent wrinkling. Okay, here we go again. <gasps> Wow, that was hard. <laughs> I don't know. That was really crazy. That was really crazy. Now I get to do a little bit up here at the top. I don't even know if my microphone is there anymore. I get to do a little bit up here at the top for his fin and a little bit here at the bottom for his fin. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to get maybe some orange. Mix a little red into it. Making sure I have lots of, ooh, don't worry if you get a big drop of water because we're going to blow, so it's okay. There's this funny little fin here. And now he needs a funny little fin here. Got a little green in my yellow. All right, let's try again. Wow, that's a pretty funny fish. I think everybody would think that was really pretty. The next part is to draw his eye in a couple parts with the Sharpie. And you've got to be really careful about that. The painting really needs to be dry. So we're going to take a patient minute. If you need to get up and stretch and move around, this is a good time to do it. But don't forget to come back when your painting is dry and join me to finish this. Or you can get mom to use the hair dryer, but sometimes that can be hard because it blows the watercolor everywhere. So it just is up to you on what you want to do. But let's get this dry so we come back and finish it up. I'm so excited to see how this comes out. Okay. Wow, is he a beautiful, colorful fish. I hope you're liking your fish. And remember, you might have chosen different colors than I did to make your fish, and that is okay. And let's always try to finish our paintings and then just do another one because you're constantly learning and paintings are not about being perfect. They're about having some fun learning the skills. I want to see these on social media, like on Facebook or Instagram. So ask an adult in charge and get permission and share those with me because I'd love to see them and maybe we'll be able to share them on the show. Let's finish out the fish with our Sharpie. So finishing him out is super easy. All you've got to do is draw right around his eye. That's it, that's all. Very low pressure at this stage. So I've drawn around his eye and then I'm gonna draw his funny little eye looking back. Something's happening back here, we don't see it. But I gotta remember to put that smile on so that we know he's not really that scared. And then I wanna make sure that, you know, like Nemo, he's got a little fin here. So I'm gonna just put in a little fish fin. And then I'm going to finish with the most important thing of all, which is to sign your art because you're an artist. 
all you got to do to be an artist is to just paint in color. So you painted in color, you're an artist. So it's important to sign your name and it's okay on these to put the year because that's something special. And the people in your lives are going to want to remember when you made these. So right here in the lower right corner, let's put our names. And the year. There, that way we're not going to forget when we made these. I really appreciate you creating with me today. And I hope you're really proud of what you made. I hope you try a bunch of different types of fish. You should have a school of fish and give them to the people that you love. Give them to your friends and your mom and dad and your grandparents too. And I definitely want to see them so if you can share them with me. That would be great. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Come join us live. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central, or enjoy one of the hundreds of paintings available on replay anytime.